Le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez vous asseoir. The chamber is now back in Nous reprenons l'audience. And we are going to hear the statement Nous allons of the entendre la déposition civil party. de la partie civile. And now we are going to hear the statement of Peng Gut Suntari. Peng Gut Suntari. Please come to the Madame. front seat before the chamber. Veuillez prendre place devant la chambre. Good morning, Madame Civil Party. Bonjour, Madame. Is your civil. name Pong Gut Suntari? Vous appelez-vous bien Pong Gun Suntari? Civil Party. Yes, Mr. President. Réponse, My name oui. is Pong Gut Monsieur Suntari. Monsieur le Président, je suis Question. Madame Pong Gut Suntari. Question. Quel âge avez-vous cette année? Response. I am 53 years old. 53 ans. Question. What Question. is your nationality? Quelle est votre nationalité? Response. Réponse. I have a French nationality, but I was born Khmer. Je suis de nationalité française, mais Question. je suis né cambodgienne. What is your place of birth? Question. Quel est votre lieu de naissance? Réponse. I was born Réponse. in Sankat. Je suis Number né six in Phnom Penh. à 104, numéro 6, à Phnom Penh. Question. Question. Where is your current address and what is your occupation? Quelle est votre adresse actuelle et quelle est votre profession actuelle? Response. Réponse. At present, I live in Chaktomok, in Phnom Penh. je vis à Chaktomok, à Phnom Penh. I am a former... Je suis pédagogical trainer ancienne formatrice in French pédagogique en français. And the training is for the French La teachers throughout the public schools in Cambodia. Et vise à organiser euh, des euh, What was the name of your father? des enseignants au Cambodge. Question. Response. Quel est le nom de votre père? His name was réponse. Peng Ton. Son nom était uh, Peng Ton. Il s'appelait Peng Ton. Quelle est Response. question Le my nom de votre mère um, Sun. My mother's name is um, réponse. Sun le nom de ma mère est Im Sun Ti. Le président. Le président. The chamber. Now gives you the opportunity to describe to the chamber la possibilité the events and de nous parler the facts des événements related des to the crimes alleged on the accused Kangekil alias Doge and the impact Duke. upon you during de nous the commission of those crimes when crimes, the S21 was established and operated from the 17 April 1975 through the 6 of January 1979, and the reasons for you to be a civil party and the concrete reparations that you wish to seek, also you can express your feelings regarding the sufferings emotionally and physically from those crimes. You can proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Thank you, Your Honours, for giving me the opportunity to make a statement before this chamber today. First of all, I would like to describe about my memory and sentiment between my father and I from my childhood to adulthood, to adolescence, and then to age adult. I, what I can remember is an innocent and lovely father. And the last time that I saw him, I will describe that. And later on, bon et juste et innocent. Je vous parlerai de mes souvenirs. Mais je commencerai par vous parler de ses souvenirs. And later on, I will. Briefly talked about the period of the democratic Kampuchea, suite de la période du Kampuchea démocratique, and that the fact that I did not see his returning, I will talk about our suffering and our great loss after we heard the news that he was executed at S21. Later on, I will talk about the our. Effort to do the research and the results and the responses we received from the accused, Mr. President, through this statement, I would like to pray to my father's soul. Declaration. I would like to honor the memory. As a prisoner wearing serial number 16 at S21. With Mr. President's leave, I would like to show some photos, some surviving photos of my father, and the serial number on my father's is number 17. Correct the interpreter. The President, the court officer. Please take the photos from the civil party and have them projected on the slide. Afficher les photos que la partie civile souhaite présenter par le biais du rétroprojecteur. The president. Le président. Could you try to adjust the reflections of the light on the protector, court officer? Vous essayez d'ajuster la brillance. Because part of the photo is whitened. Étant apparaît ici ne peut être lu étant donné l'effet. de brillance.
Madame Civil Party, you can now continue with your statement. Je vous invite à continuer votre déposition. Thank you, Mr. President. La partie civile. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. First of all, I just showed you the a photograph of my father wearing placard number 17. I would like to pray to his soul. He was handcuffed and pushed onto a truck on the 16th of March 76 and was sent to Tulsa Line where he was tortured, dehumanized, and in the end, he was smashed. En fin de compte, il a été écrasé. Mr. President, Your Honours, Monsieur le Président, Madame, I Monsieur le Juge, je souhaite que je souhaite que la personnalité and the quality Vous parlez of de la my father et des qualités as a person and as a father who lived in the Cambodian society who earned respect from people who knew him. I want to make this as lively as, lively as possible. My father was a man who had a strong stance firm but humble. Toute sa vie était he listens to his children regardless of et what the matter was. He paid attention to the children and he always had time for the children possible. despite his busy work. He never beat de ses enfants. Il any of his children. I have never had heard him even using some kind of strong words toward the, the children. Nous. He taught us Il to love nous a humankind les and dignity. My father taught us how to deal with conflicts and how to Gérer avoid les conflits, comment éviter taking any revenge against anyone and teaching us how to know the dignity of humankind. And he meant business. He really was a role model. Whatever he did, he left the trace of great model, a person with great wisdom, une and the wisdom that is still well embedded with every, the, the mindset of all the children. De chacun, when de we enfants. grew up, we learned that en he was the person who really admired and respected Qui était estimé, and uh, we received a very warm care, attention from him at all times, through his attitude, his son way of speaking to us, la dont il and his à nous, kindness et affection. Son and it, is, it was a huge uh, sentiment toward us, son amour and it is priceless. Ceci est inestimable. Very always, uh, he protected us. Il nous so he toujours. was like a Il great shadow to protect us from the outside world of monde hatred extérieur, and monde extérieur problems. De haine et semé de d'embûches. On one occasion, there was a big rain, and I was about five to six years old. And I went out to play 
under the rain. And then I fell and hurt my chin without the knowledge of my mother. When I came back home, sans que ma mère ait pu s'en rendre compte, je suis rentré à la maison. I was assisted by my father and he took me hein, to the doctor so that my injury could be treated docteur, and I could feel how caring he was toward me and he could really euh, heal my pain, the, the emotional pain. Il a fait disparaître Although la douleur par l'attention qu'il m'a portée. The il y a près de cet événement à près de 50 ans, mais ce moment que nous avons partagé est toujours on présent evening, en moi. Un dimanche soir, nous sommes allés nous promener le long de and la rivière. Et je me suis rappelé, je me rappelle encore du moment to, où il m'a pris to help me get, uh, la main. Off the car. And then he put his hand into the open mouth of the concrete statue in front of the royal palace. And then he would joked with me by saying that look, the lion is now biting my hand. I was back then called Lay, which is my alias name, and I cried when I heard that the, the lion was uh, uh, biting him because I was afraid that he uh, got hurt. But he then laughed at me. Et je pleurais. Il, euh, il m'a regardé en souriant. My childhood memory reveals that uh, I have been very close to my father and how much care I had also for my father. It is actually my duty now to attest to this chamber the de memory de de ce the pour lui dignity the caring la father the, the, the things that had uh, been deprived of him during the time when he was in captivity en captivité. he was actually the cornerstone for the whole family. family. He did his best to <coughs> support the family. Et a fait tout ce and he pour nous faire was vivre the father who possible. educated children to be gentle and Il humble. Ses enfants pour soient gentils et humbles. He worked a lot. He was a busy rector, comme rector the director of comme the high educational institution. My parents normally had uh, dinner at about 7 to 7.30 p.m. And uh, he would be seen coming to our room quoi, to assist us with our homework. Pièce, and he always listened to our devoirs. problems at school. And then du jour. he would uh, be able to assist us with all the problems. Et à tous nos problems. Sunday would uh, always be reserved for our time together in the family. One day, when my mother was preparing some food uh, for the meal that we enjoyed uh, together during the weekend, uh, then my father would take the opportunity to teach us how to be a good citizen, how to be a good person in society. He would like 
us, des membres dignes de la société. As, as me in particular as a single daughter in the family to et be moi, en tant que seule fille de educated, la famille, uh, and he really cared for me a great deal. Et s'occupait beaucoup de moi. He was the person with open mind. Mon père His mind was open to the outside world. However, he really had the idea of the preservation. Tout en étant he attaché preserved à la the Khmer culture and heritage. I still remember during the 1960s there was a Dans novel, les 60, the novel entitled The Nature of Women. Uh, and then it had been produced into the film and show at the Soria movie. And Soria. I sat next to him to watch that movie together. The movie reminds us of the Ce event because marqué. in the story itself, Car the author tried to educate the audience of how uh, parents' uh, love uh, could have been toward their children, parental, although their, the mother was departed from the children, then uh, she could really ex uh, show her loving nature toward the, the children. After the Khmeru, I tried to locate uh, the Après movie, Rouge, but to no avail. Film, my father never forgot to educate us bien on several other tous. foreign cultures to understand the world. Very often, my father had to fill missions in France, missions. Swiss, China, France, South Suisse, China, America. And every time when he was there, he fois, would uh, be sending some gifts, souvenirs from abroad de pays. to the children and the family. As a lawyer, a, a professor, a rector juriste, uh, and the principal of the higher education institution. He earned supérieure. a lot of dignity and he tried to protect the interests of the nation and he tried to protect Koh Boulevard or Boulevard Island uh, during the time of conflict uh, with the South Vietnam and uh, Cambodia. In 1974, Un he went with the Navy, the National Navy crew to that island and we île. were anxious because th during that time, the the Parce country que was le in conflict en uh, and that Lonnol's regime had a conflict with Lonnol. the South Vietnam government uh, and I le could regime. not stop being so anxious although when I was at school because I knew that my father Et would be on the way to that island uh, je, and I was I had been so anxious until the moment I could see him back euh, home j'ai eu peur jusqu'au moment je l'ai vu rentrer à la and maison I, would like to also tell the court that uh, my childhood uh, and my adolescent uh, hood, actually, I have spent uh, the whole, the entire period uh, to be in the very good care of heureuse, my father. When I turned 18, I wanted to study law Dès because I would ans, like to take the footstep of my father and as advised by him. And he was a great role model, pour lequel une a Il very était righteous role model. And as a daughter, I would really love to follow his footstep. And he never refused to allow me to pursue my choix. education in law. And I was waiting to be granted a scholarship to continue the education. Mon However, a few months later, my mother told me that uh, actually mois, my plan fait, uh, really worried my father 
le préoccupé Because, grandement. Because uh, he told my father that he was afraid that I would not be well treated. Because uh, de ne pas être uh, bien traité. if I studied law, si then uh, I would be close to him and close to the politics. J'aurais été dans ce cas proche de mon père et proche de la politique. I would like to now proceed with further statement. Uh, Je voudrais passer on the 16th of August 1968, at about 10 o'clock in the evening, a group of police came to arrest me. I could hear their footsteps, and they, uh, they started to search uh, my room, and then I was half awake, and I could see my grandparents. And I was shocked. I ran to take refuge under the euh, arms of my father while the police kept on searching the room. I remained close to my father, but my mother told me to go and uh, be close to my, sis uh, my brothers. I tried to be close to my father, of course, because it was so warm. However, I could not really contest uh, my mother's advice that I had to go to uh, see my brothers. And uh, in the morning, I woke up. I did not see my mother. And I could uh, expect that uh, she would be in my grandparents' house. My grandparents' house is uh, close uh, to my house, and I went there and Je saw my mother. Père. Pas vu ma mère and my parents were very sad, and, and I triste. knew that my father Et was arrested. I was very terrified because I was afraid that he would be also arrested and killed uh, in Trapeankralang like the other people who had been executed there previously. However, uh, I was consoled by my grandparents when I, at that time I was 12 years old. A few weeks passed by Après quelques Children semaines, were allowed to les enfants étaient autorisés pay a visit to my father. À rendre visite à notre père. And I still remember the moment je me souviens encore when de the cette door scène. opened, Lorsque we all ran to hug Nous him. Avons tous couru pour my mother and my youngest son, uh, 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 this, my youngest frère. son was cradled by mother when she gave him uh, to my father to uh, continue cradle him. Ma mère a and at that moment, it, it was so moved that even the guard uh, could not hold back le his tienne. tears. Et même le garde avait les larmes aux yeux. Next to the bed, there was a table for couche, writing, and there was a piece of paper in which uh, the writing of my father de papier uh, could have written in père. it. And no one could talk anything, and Personne then ne we were separated. Before we left, uh, we looked at Ensuite, the door séparés, which was closed partir, behind us. Uh, nous nous sommes retournés pour voir la, la porte qui s'était refermé derrière nous. A month later, Au bout d'un mois, during lunch, alors que nous étions à table, my mother was not present et que ma mère because était normally he, she would uh, be taken uh, the meal to my father at the detention facility located at Poolcock. I ate lunch together Cork. with my brothers, and I heard table, moi, the footstep of my father coming, le, and I saw le, him le, le coming back home wearing dark green pants, 
and I could see a few policemen following him and the children left uh, the, uh, the lunch table to uh, greet him because they were, we all were happy to see him back home. He was still uh, under surveillance of the police and he was put in the house arrest for the following three months. This event uh, really is still in my mind. I don't understand uh, why such a good family, a good father like him, was bon accused of being the Khmer Rouge. He was a normal man, a noble person who would like to protect uh, the liberty and would like to provide the opportunity for the poor to be able to continue their education, and that's all. And donc, I would like to proceed to the 16th of March, 1975, when my father was departing to Geneva. In the evening of March, 1975, I was still reviewing my lessons because uh, uh, students at that time had uh, two shifts at school because uh, a lot of people would be seen running uh, from the liberated zones uh, to Phnom Penh. And school could uh, be at uh, school days uh, was reduced. At about 3 p.m., my mother shouted uh, or called me, and then I could see my father who was already at the ready to depart. She looked at me without saying a word. It was a very strange moment of departure. Having noted this moment, I could now see that at that time my father could have already envisaged the disasters that could have happened to the family ahead uh, during his departure. I and my brother saw him off at the airport. At that time, I could not concentrate on my education, my study or homework because I was so anxious. And a uh, few years later, we learned that uh, he died. And I asked my father, I asked her to recall the accounts of what happened to my father after he finally departed from us. My mother told us that after he was well dressed, his close secretary, before uh, he was uh, to be leaving, he removed, actually, he removed his uh, shirt and lie on his back, and my mother was seen to give the mashas to him, and she noted that my father did not want to leave the family. It, it was some kind of omen that uh, she could see that uh, he could see that something could happen. So his, his worries could be well expressed in his facial expression. Il y avait dans son regard, uh, toute cette tristesse. And uh, it was at the moment that he was speechless. At about 7 p.m., we soir. were expecting his phone call because he promised that uh, when he reached Bangkok, uh, Bangkok, he would then call us. Nous we started to feel very worried already when he Le left home at, uh, at the air uh, to the airport il, because il at that time we could hear uh, that uh, there would be a lot of bombardments uh, uh, 
everywhere nous in the country. Avait des Later on, we received pays. the phone call that he Finalement, was in Bangkok. That was the last word or voice we heard from him, the last que nous avons moment de sa that uh, we heard from him. The evening of 16 of March, Le soir du 16 mars, 1975, uh, we were announced, uh, we heard on the radio la broadcast radio that the schools uh, would be closed uh, because uh, there would be severe bombardments and that uh, students were not uh, advised to go back to schools. A few days before the 17th of April 1975, uh, my mother received a letter from the Foreign Ministry. Uh, in the letter, we learned that uh, he would uh, be back home. I would like now to proceed with the 17th of April 1975 event when the population of Phnom Penh was forcibly evacuated. At that time, I was so shocked to see such a exodus uh, carried out by the Khmer Rouge. And it, is, it was worse because there was no presence of my father. Fortunately, my grandfather could assist us with the evacuation. However, he could not be the right person suitable enough to replace uh, my father. We went together on the direction to Kampung Chenang. My parents were uh, born in Kampung Chenang and uh, they would like us to uh, move to Kampung Chenang to do the rice farming uh, as ordered uh, by Anka. Since uh, we did not have any kind of means of transportation to travel to Kampung Chenang, then we let Anka decide uh, to which direction they would wish us to go to. Then we move to uh, sector 21 and finally sector 505. Like the other women, I was moved to mobile units and would be made to do farming in various places according to the orders of Anka. Starvation, forced marriage, mariage forcé. This kind of thing, I ha could escape. Uh, luckily, I could uh, avoid uh, being raped or avoid the forced uh, marriage. During the regime, I could not stop thinking of my father. I wished he were with us to share the the moment uh, and uh, I knew that he was in France, uh, he was uh, fine. By, by having said that, uh, I mean, I, first I would like him to be with us, but however, after all, I knew it would be better off for him to be there. At least I knew he survived in France. In, uh, in later of the year, there was a big flood at Sector 505. And I did not know why at that time I was so anxious and I had a vivid nightmare that I saw my father in the dream. His body was swollen, I could not see his face and he was speechless and I did not know why he did not talk anything in the dream and uh, I could still feel 
uneasy about this and I asked a permission from the chief of the unit to go home. And when I came home, I did not see my mother. I met my grandfather instead. I shared with her the account of my dream and I told her that I was afraid my father would be in big trouble because I saw him in the dream and he was not in a good shape actually in the dream. And a few years later, of course, that dream came true because the dream gave me the indication that my father would be in trouble, obviously. In Khmer Rouge regime, when I saw the old people the same age as my father who had to work under the sun, the, the, the baking sun, and I could imagine how difficult life could have been, and I, I thought that it would be very fortunate for my father who would not be there anyway. On one occasion, I went to the place where I was asked to write my biography, and I wrote the details, the truths of my family, myself, my parents, in order to uh, make sure that this information I put in the biography could be communicated to the upper echelon of the Khmer Rouge so that my father could locate us. However, unfortunately, I did not know that the biography could end up being in the hand of some bad people, maybe, and that uh, could lead to the arrest of my father. But I, I don't know, maybe it was true that because of that biography, that my father was arrested later. I did not know until now whether the biography was uh, torn apart or thrown in the garbage bin, but uh, who knows? During the regime, the Khmer Rouge regime, whenever emergency came, whenever I had to be, exp to be exposed to the starvation, I could not talk because the 17 April people were regarded as prisoners of war. So we were deprived of our freedom, liberty. We were put to plant rice at the, the rice field. And I was left uh, at, on one occasion in the jungle because the people uh, did not like me. They left me. Uh, uh, alone in the jungle. Abandonné, Luckily, the, uh, some senior women uh, loved me and then uh, gave me a ride home. Last time when I was carrying salt on the Seda Dam, I saw people who were defeating from the battlefield. I dropped the uh, carrying basket and then I ran away together with those flock of people. I kept running due to fear and excitement until I could not move any further due to the number of people who were also running. I did not know where to go. I did not have anything with me. I only had the clothes on my body and I did not know anyone. I lost all my family members. I could not find my mother. I only saw people scattering and running everywhere. At both Leo Sub District, it was nightfall, and I went searching amongst those groups of people, and I heard the voice of my mother. I looked into that direction. I saw her carrying a torch shouting for the names of my two younger siblings. I met her and she took me to her group where I saw my handicapped sibling and my grandmother there. I left with them by taking the boat across crossing the Mekong River and continue our escape as ordered by the Khmer Rouge who gathered us together with them to go to Bangkit Mountain and later as there was 
a village chief who was nearby and the son of the village chief had a radio and he tuned to the channel of the Democratic Campuchia, but instead they heard the voice from America channel and we learned that Phnom Penh failed. So we went down the Bangkit Mountain and I met my aunt who was forced to get married by Onka. So we together made our journey through Crochet as we had no food to eat and we would starve to death if we keep running. So we returned to the last village where I stayed. But upon our arrival at that village, we did not have any rice to search for any rice. And I would like to tell the president and the chamber that when Anka evacuated us on the 17th April 75 to our native villages due to the announcement of the fear of bombardment, and my native village was in Phnom Penh, and over there I had nowhere to stay. So I had to move by the order of Anka. And when the Khmer Rus were defeated, we ran to the village where we used to work and stay there, but they refused to give us anything because everything which was communal at the time became private property of those villagers and there was nothing left for us to eat. We had to think deeply on what we had to do next and finally we decided to go back to Phnom Penh which was a long journey from Crochet. And we could not walk on our feet for this long journey and we had nothing left, no diamonds or no gold to exchange for the trip or no transportation. We then decided to make a bamboo raft and then we made our journey on the Mekong River from Crochet to Phnom Penh and we reached Phnom Penh in February 1976. We stopped at Pretakung and we exchanged the rice for 20 kilos of rice and we stay at a monk residence in Pretakung Pagoda. In order to solve our food, then my younger son, my younger brother, worked as a boat carrier transporting people across the river in order to get rice for, to feed us and my mother wanted to look for her younger brother who disappeared and we heard that my father actually came to Cambodia and he was killed but none of us believed all of us still had hope that he was still living in France and that one day we will meet him we did not know the extent and the scope of the killing committed by the Khmer Rouge regime. And I always thought, what a, regardless of what happened, my father would be untouched because he never mistreated anyone. Nobody ever displeased with him. And then I heard that one of his friends was still alive and he came to meet us at Pretakung. That uncle only spoke of two words, that Brother Ton was lied to and that he gave up his children and family. I was shocked. I was wondering what my uncle was talking about. I was moved. I looked at the bucket, the water bucket, and I pretended to carry the water. In fact, I tried not to let them see when I cried. At the river bank, I saw my youngest brother, who was 10 years old, plus, was also 
Weeping quietly, I tried to hold on to my tear, not to let him see me crying or weeping. Then I came up, and my uncle could not say anything else. He just looked at us. His tears dropped because a lot of members of the families were no longer with us. From the departure on the 17th April 75 and on the day that we met him, most half of his families disappeared. We live in a situation full of suffering and despair, and nobody dared to ask or add anything to such suffering. I only heard of people talking about the disappearance, about the deaths, about the starvation, deaths and deaths and more deaths. De famine, il y avait des morts, des morts et encore des morts. Bad news, Cape coming up about the loss of the family members, friends, and relatives. We were living and we were trying to find jobs. We were trying to find some things to eat, and we were also wiping our tears. But at the same time, we were glad that we survived from that dark cloud regime. I was still thinking of my father. On one side, I was still believing that he was still alive. On another side, I thought he might have been killed, as they said. But then my hope disappeared gradually from my mind and heart. I was shocked. Moved, because I saw my mother and my siblings survive, but unfortunately for him, who was living abroad came to die in his country. We received subsequent news. Some people said they saw him at a technological institution, and some said they lived with him at Bang Trabai, Tanlei, and some even said on the day of the 17th April 17, on the 6th of January 79, he was seen carrying a backpack making a journey to Simrit. So we were unsure and we were undecided or divided on the fate of my father. But nobody talked or said anything about S21 at the time. One day, in about October or November 79, after the rainy season, I returned to the house of my mother's cousin at Salle de Gaulle. She left her Kampong Chenang native village to live in Phnom Penh. I would like to tell the chamber that I found a job at the Phnom Penh port and from May et à partir de mai, and when I left with my mother's cousin, it was in either late October or early November, and I still can clearly remember that the rainy season was finished. At that time, there was no currency yet, and everything was sold on the exchange for rice. After I returned from the house, my mother's cousin and another woman who was selling sugar palm, so I stopped her and exchanged rice with that sugar palm. The, that woman wrapped that sugar palm with a piece of paper, so I put it in my bag and made my trip. However, Somehow, Cependant, I wanted to see what is on that piece of paper since I did not see anything in writing since 1975. Uh, that piece of paper was either in a form of a newspaper or magazine. Along that Jardin de Gold Street, mm -hmm. I unwrapped the sugar palm, and on that piece of paper, I saw 
a snapshot of my father along with other victims' photos and under his name, under his photo, his name was written. But I could not believe that was his photo. I thought they must make a mistake. And I refused to accept it. And I told my mother that it was not my father, my father's photo. But my mother looked at the photo and she acknowledged it was his photo. So my mother and I became pale, speechless, shocked, and we kept making our journey home without saying a single word. We did not know that people were killed everywhere. When I saw that piece of paper, then I realized the existence of S21. His photo, he, he was skinny in his photo, his eyes were hopeless, hopeless and there was a piece of placard hanging from his neck wearing number play, displaying number 17. I was still wondering what happened to him as he knew those uh, Khmeru's leadership as they used to be his former students or colleagues as Kiel Sampon and even Ian Sari, their help was was not far from ours. So for us, I could not believe that those intellectuals were the ones who were responsible for the death of my father. I still could not accept it. And I would like to continue regarding my survival after that stressing moment of learning the news of the death of my father. Later on, we learned that the Tools Vibray High School was turned into S21 or prison or Tools Line, which was known later on and at present time. My mother and I went to that location to search for the truth, to make sure whether my father was killed at that location. Pour voir si mon père avait we été walked from the department of the municipal port to Narodam Boulevard and then to the Maple Street, and we saw the high rise of those buildings. Les I was excited and shocked, and it was so quiet and scary as it was the buildings to house the ghost. I entered the building, the wooden building, and at that time, there were only about 20 people who were looking. I was shocked to see such a scene. I did not go to the location where those group of people was looking at something. I went to building C. I ran upstairs, and I saw individual cells next to each other. My mother leaned against the wall as she could not move. I was also shocked by witnessing such a scene. And then I, it came gradually to my mind that my father might have been detained here. I looked and moved from one individual cell to the next. And I realized that only one prisoner was detained in each individual cell. And there could be plenty of prisoners who were there before and after the detention of my father. My mind was unsettled. I tried to look for anything to identify my father. Unfortunately, I found nothing. My mother called me as she saw me running up and down. She called me to return. I left with despair. My body was so light that I could not feel anything. I saw the 
amusement boxes. Les boîtes de munitions. I saw nothing humanized in that location. I saw a pile of clothes of prisoners. I saw the shackles, the long bars, the torturing tools. Despite the many months of the defeat of the Khmer Rouge, S21 still had the stench of blood. The smell of people dying still lingering in the rooms. My mother and I returned home. And along the way, nobody spoke any word. Because we were so shocked beyond our belief, that night my mother and I wept quietly. We slept, turning back to each other. We did not want each other to hear our weeping. I did not want her to feel more pain and suffering, and she felt likewise. We slept under one mosquito net, one sleeping mat, and through one night we kept weeping, and only we were so hopeless. Many years have passed, and the suffering was still in my mind, and it deepened. Every time I talk about it, my throat seems to be stuck by something, and I could never fed up with weeping. Only recently that I could speak more about the event, my feeling of scare and fear that I lost my father at S21, and gradually I could not see him alive anymore as he was smashed by S21 after he was tortured, dehumanized, and even if his skeleton remains, I did not know where it was or how he was died and how could I accept that as a daughter and that I still respect and held him in high esteem. Many months have passed, Mr. Ungbeit, the survivor from S21, came to my mother's house and asked for the photo of my father, of him wearing his robe, his law degree robe, and also a photo of him wearing number 17. Many months, many weeks have passed, and Mr. Bat returned and said that his document was found. It was a preliminary interrogation which contained four pages, and the document ER number E0018-8839 until 4-3 in the my language and in French 0018-8444. 2486 in French. My younger son made a copy of these documents, and these documents are the testimony that my father was sent to S21. I read the confessions. 0020430810 and the interrogator was Mom Nai who interrogated my father and Mom Nai himself acknowledged during his testimony before this chamber regarding the interrogation of my father. Ce que ce dernier a reconnu lors de son audition devant la chambre. After I learned of the death of my father. My uncle took care of my two younger sons, and my another uncle also took care of my two other brothers in order to help my mother, and they were given education. My mother and I lived together, and my mother had no ability to raise my children anymore. I feel 
I miss my father so much. I lost the breadwinner of the family, the person whom I always turned to when I had trouble. And my mother was only thinking of committing suicide. My family fell deeper into the tragedy. That is, how could we survive facing the daily living condition with such emotion? My mother reacted so strongly to the loss of my father. She didn't know what to do. With the three young children and in her widow status, previously we all relied upon my father and frequently they thought of committing suicide. Her deep psychological impact was so serious and nobody dared to talk or explain to her because it was so extremely difficult for us and for her. We did not know what to do or which solution we should seek. I look at my mother, she was not in her best status. Her mind was not with her. And my two younger brothers tries to work hard in order to support themselves, and I myself continued to live with my mother. I was so frustrated with the situation that we lived. We tried to survive, although we survived from that regime, we have now to face the challenge of being survived in such a situation. At that time, there was no social assistance or no psycho psych psychological assistance from any organization. We both tried to comfort ourselves in order to survive, and my mother want, wanted to comfort us so that we could study and soon find our future. She talks about the sacrifice of my father, that he gave up everything to return to the country in order to be reunited with the family, and that we should study hard to pay respect to my father. In about late 1980, I received a scholarship to study in the former Soviet Union, and my other brother also went to the former Soviet Union, and another one went to the East Germany. The rest tries to find work in Cambodia. During the five-year period, I studied in the former Soviet Union. I missed my father every single day. I thought of how he was killed. One night I dreamed of him. I saw only half of his body floating around in the sky near the location where he used to talk to us at our former house. He was floating around and he called my name, Ole. I already died. I woke up from the dream. I tried to feel the wall. I touched the carpet. And I realized that now I'm no longer in Cambodia. I was in the Soviet Union. But whatever happened to my father back there was still a mystery. For the rest of the night, I could not sleep. I wanted to return. I wanted to go back to see S21, but I could not come. I imagined of the times in the afternoon when the cook finished cut, making the coconut juice, then I would take the juice to him who, while he was sitting in the hammock in the house. And my dream was reoccurring frequently on that occasion when I would go and get him the coconut juice or the tea. Despite the scopes of the gravity, 
de la gravité. The felt upon my family. We tried our best to rebuild our family, to find the new life, a new path for our lives. But the loss of my father is, a, is the pain and the suffering that cannot be forgotten. One part of my heart with the deep love for my father by now filled with suffering, wound which cannot be cured. Mr. President, I am still thinking of my father even at this moment. The long, the older I grow, the more I think of him. And I even think of him more when my children talk to me. I, when my child talk to me that one of the teeth was about to fall off, and it reminds me of the time when I talked to my father. And at that time, he would take me to a dentist. And only later on, several months later, I smiled at him. And that I did not lie the shape of my teeth. He would smile at me. And that would make me comfortable. And when my child opened the mouth and talked to me about the teeth, it keeps reminding me of the time that I talked to my father. Mr. President, it is almost 12 o'clock now. And I still only halfway. Would you want me to continue? The president. As the statement is long, and it is now appropriate time for lunch break. Uh, you cannot continue. So the chamber will now adjourn for lunch. And the chamber would also like to inform the parties to the proceedings and the public that this afternoon we will continue to hear the statement of this civil party and per our scheduling as amended yesterday, we will also hear the statement of another civil party, However, due to the technical problems of the IT unit, which the chamber requires to hear the testimony of another civil party, U Saurat, who has to participate through video conferencing, which will be held Tomorrow, starting from 1.30 p.m., and the chamber received the news regarding the technical issues that needs to be resolved and that it needs time to do it. Therefore, for this afternoon, the chamber decides to only hear the testimony of this Pung Gut Suntari, and if the time is available, then we will hear the testimony of the civil party Siung Wan Di. But if the time is too short, then the chamber will not proceed with the hearing of this civil party's statement, as we will then hear the testimony of the civil party up to half past three. So please be informed of this. Security guard, take the accused back to the detention facility and bring him back 
this afternoon before 1.30. The hearing is now adjourned. All rise, says the graffier. La graffière, mesdames et messieurs, veuillez vous lever.